So the next example will be slightly more uh, complicated. So here we have a, a special damping uh, device which consists of a sphere. So the sphere is enclosed in a spherical cavity with the distance between the sphere surface and the interior wall of the cavity being one millimeter. And the space between the sphere and the wall is filled with an oil. So this oil is SAE10W at 38 degrees C. So we, we know the oil, the temperature. So from there, we can use the chart in order to get the viscosity at 38 degrees C. So the diameter of the sphere is given is 100 uh, millimeter. And the sphere is turned by a shaft that has a diameter much less than the diameter of the sphere. So that means that the effect of the shaft can be uh, neglected. So again, we are asked to determine the torque on the shaft for a rotation of 10 RPM. So again, just like the previous one, uh, let's say we start with the, the sphere being stationary and then you, you apply a torque in order to rotate it, right? So initially it will accelerate, the rotation will continue to increase up to a point whereby the torque that you apply is exactly balanced by the resistive torque of the oil. So here will be slightly more uh, complicated compared to the this because now even the arm's radius is actually not a uh, constant for. So let's draw again schematic diagram. Okay, let's put everything that we know. So we have a, a sphere. Right, so first of all, just draw two dimensional, and we have a shaft, and then it is actually enclosed in a container, and then the shaft and the sphere is rotating at the angle of omega, and now it's given as 10 rpm. When you do the calculation later on, you're gonna have to change that to radian uh, per second. So, given the diameter. D is given as 10, no, 100 millimeter. Okay, and then the thickness or the sp spacing is equal to T, and it's always constant, it's equal to 1 millimeter. And the region here is filled with oil, SAE 10W at 38 degrees C. So, what are we asked to find? So, find the top. Just like what we did in the previous part, the first things that we need to do is actually find a suitable elemental element whereby the shear stress actually constants anywhere on that element. Let's say consider small elemental, again, ring element, but slightly different thing. Let's draw this three dimensional. So I'm going to draw a sphere. That's the sphere, right? So let's draw 3D. So it's like that. Right. So if that's the center, let's see if I can draw it here. So that distance is, let's say, R, right? So just consider small ring here so and then on the other side we have this dotted line so that's the ring the arms radius for the ring so i call that one small r and let's say this angle this angle there is theta and this angle here is d theta and then this distance here i call that one ds so if you think about it anywhere on that ring the velocity will be equal to omega r okay and then the shear stress will be mu omega r divided by the thickness d so anywhere on those rings the shear stress actually has the same expression and it is actually dependent on 
R. So now consider top on elemental ring, right? So I call that one D top. So it's actually equal to the F where the F is the force on these elemental rings. Of course, it's multiplied by R because the, the arm strain is actually R, right? And again, force is actually oh, is equal to tau multiplied by dA and then multiplied by R. So now, tau is actually equal to mu dV dy. So dV dy is actually equal to omega R divided by d and now we have da multiplied by r so now let's consider da right so da da is actually equal to 2 pi r the perimeter multiplied by ds right but now let's consider ds so so this is ds and this is actually d theta okay and this angle this step that is r right so basically we can write this ds is actually equal to r d theta and so now we can write da is actually equal to 2 pi r ds which is r d theta right but if we look at the relationship between R and big R, so let's look at this, this triangle here. So we have this is big R, right? That's big R. This is theta, this is small r. So we can actually say that R is actually equal to R sine theta. Right, so we can write dA is equal to 2 pi r, which is r sine theta, ds, which is r d theta. So that's equal to 2 pi r squared sine theta d theta. So now we can substitute again in our expression for the, the top on the elemental ring. It's actually equal to mu omega r over d d a r. So if we substitute, then we have that's equal to mu. Then this is mu small r is actually equal to r sine theta divided by d. And dA is the expression that we got just now is 2 pi r squared sine theta d theta. And then small r is actually equal to r sine theta. So now we can rearrange that. So d top is 2 pi mu omega over t. R one two three four R to the power of four and then sine theta one two three sine cube theta d theta. Okay, so that's the torque on this elemental ring. So in order to calculate the torque for the whole of this sphere, what we need to do is basically we have to integrate because when Theta is actually equal to zero, we are here. Then when theta increases, we will cover more surfaces until theta is actually equal to pi, right? So we have to integrate from zero. So this is theta is equal to zero. And here is theta equal to pi. So in the middle here, theta equal to pi by two. So let's do the integration. So now the total top will be equal to call that t so this one is just a constant 2 pi mu omega over t r to the power of 4 so now sine cube theta d theta from 0 to pi 
But I want to do some trick because I know that the top on the top half is actually exactly the same as the bottom half. So I can just integrate from 0 to pi by 2 and then multiply by 2. And that's the reason why I do that. So I can write top is actually equal to 4 pi mu omega over t r to the power of 4. So 2 times 2 is 4. And I change the integration from 0 to pi by 2 sine cube theta d theta. The reason that I do that is because I have this formula which says that integrations of sine to the nx dx for 0 to pi by 2 and that's actually an exact formula which I can use, right? So if I rewrite that formula again, so integrations of sine theta lah, sine n theta d theta from 0 to pi by 2 is actually equal to for n or n yeah? because in our case n is actually equal to 3, right? So that's equal to n minus 1, n multiplied by n minus 3, n minus 2 multiplied by until we get 4, 5 times 2, 3 times 1. So that means that in our case, I have sine 3 theta d theta from 0 to 5 by 2. By using this, so our n is actually equal to 3. 3 minus 1 is 2, so we start straight to here. So 2 by 3 times 1. So it's actually equal to 2 by 3, right? So that means that top is just equal to 4 pi mu omega over t r power of 4 times 2 by 3. So the last part, what we need to do is just substitute the numbers. 4, 5, mu from the chart is actually 4 times 10 to minus 2. Omega, remember we have to change to uh, radian per second, so it's 10 RPM. Change to radian, we have to multiply by 2 pi divided by 60. Then divided by the thickness of the oil is 1 times 10 to minus 3. Because it's one millimeter, and then radius is 0 0.05 to the power of 4 multiplied by 2 by 3, and that gives us a top of 0 0.00209 Newton meter.